In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an Arrhenius plot in experimental data to calculate the activation energy for a reaction. And also, I'm going to show you how you can find the intercept of this graph and therefore find the value of your Arrhenius constant or your Arrhenius factor. So here's some worked example data. So let's imagine you've done an experiment and you've done lots of different temperatures and you've calculated your inverse temperature. So you're one over your temperature. You've got these values. Then for each temperature, you've worked out the value for the rate constant k. And then what you need to do is calculate the natural logarithm of k and then get a range of values here. To do an Arrhenius plot, all you need to do is on your x-axis, you have one over your temperature. So your inverse temperature, make sure it's in Kelvin. Um, so the inverse temperature will be Kelvin to minus one. And then on your y-axis, you're going to have the natural logarithm of your rate constant k. And when you plot this, you should get a nice straight line. This is going to be very useful for calculating your activation energy and also calculating your intercept. So the first step in finding these two things is to find the gradient. Now I've created this data so I know that all of these points actually lie exactly on the line. So the first step is you need to find the gradient of the line. And so because I know these points are actually on the line, I can just substitute these, though you want to make sure you're using points from your line. So you substitute in some value. So I'm taking the, this point and this point, substituting it into the gradient formula, and I obtain a value of the gradient as shown. So we got the gradient, and the gradient is actually going to be really useful. So the second step is we can now find the activation energy. And to do this, we need our value of the gradient that we've just calculated. We can then get our equation for this line. Of course, this is your y. You've got a gradient. Um, you've got 1 over t is your x. And then the intercept is actually going to be ln a. So this is kind of in the form y equals mx plus c. And we need to kind of work out how this matches up with y equals mx plus c. So as I say, our x is 1 over t. So you can imagine taking 1 over t there. The coefficient in front of 1 over t is going to be minus Ea over R. So our gradient is simply going to be minus Ea over R. And for later, we're going to notice that this is going to be our y-intercept. So we've got our gradient as this. You'll notice that we've already calculated the gradient. We just need R. R stands for the gas constant, which we know is 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. Make sure you're keeping track of what units you're using so you know the units of your final answer and you're making sure that everything's consistent. That's one place that people can go wrong. So now we just simply substitute our value for M, substitute the value for R, and with some very simple algebra, you can get the activation energy. And of course, you could divide this by a thousand so you get kilojoules per mole and round it a little bit. So now that we've got the activation energy, the final step is to find the intercept. And from the intercept, we can get the value of our Arrhenius constant. So we've got the gradient from the previous answer. The next step is we need to find a point on this line, and we can substitute that point into our equation. And that's the equation from before. Now, you just can choose any point from your line. I know for a fact that this point is actually on the line, so I'm going to use this point here. So you take your point from the line, and of course your ln of your rate constant k is going to be your y value, and you've got 1 over t, which you can substitute. The thing you have to be very careful on is the sign. So here we've got a negative gradient, but remember that the gradient is equal to minus Ea over R. So it's not a minus minus happening here. We're replacing the minus Ea over R with this whole expression. So it actually turns out to be this. So I've not made a mistake with this minus here because the minus is part of the formula for the gradient. So you're not doing minus minus. This gives us this value um, in this expression. And so all we need to do is some very simple algebra. We add this to both sides and we can get an expression for ln a. And we want to get the value of a. So we have to do e to the power of this, e to the power of this. And of course, e to the ln a is simply going to be a because that's one of the properties of the uh, natural logarithm. e to the power of a natural logarithm is simply whatever is, is um, here. 
then we've got that equal to that. So we've taken E of both sides, and when you put that into a calculator, it will give you a value of four times 10 to the power of 10, which is of the approximately the right order of magnitude. You should be looking around power 10 to the power of 10, and the units are dm cubed per mole per second. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If this did help you find these two values, I'd appreciate if you would like and subscribe the video so other people can discover it. And finally, thank you very much for watching.